Hello everybody and welcome to Horizon Dawn of Retribution. Uh, I'm Rutz, I've never played the game, Josh is playing currently, everyone else knows something about it. And we are ziplining, because that's what you do in the post-apocalypse. Yes. I, uh, I have since played through the first third of the game or so uh, since the last time we recorded and uh, remember what the jump button is. <laughs> yes, that was, that was my favorite part of that week, bar none. Actually, just about every time in a video game somebody jumps for like a zipline or a ladder or something, completely eats shit implausibly, uh, it, it nourishes me just a little bit. I do love the embrace. Like, how do I put this? Mother's heart. Like the a hug, actual... or like the place? No, no, the, the, the place in the game, like... Oh. It's... It's way too much of... The, the first tutorial that we did last week is way too hand-holdy and painful. This is, yeah. um... This is sort of a Actually, mini version of the open first. world. Uh, before you were really yeah, let it... loose to just... So we can actually whatever. just see the the map here. So the game kind of has this interesting progression. So we've got like Babby's first open world here where we've got about, I think there are four side quests here. Um, we're probably going to do them on screen. They're all pretty simple. Um, and it gives you an idea of what the, the open world stuff in this game looks like. And then we'll probably stick to main quest stuff for a while. And then we get out into here after the initial uh, opening segment and we've got um, more kind of... Uh, like, like learning how the game works, it introduces you to the first of the uh, the hunting grounds, which are like challenge areas to like show off combat mechanics. And then you'll get over here and then you get into here and you've got the full open world in this area. So right now we're just gonna focus on this area down here for this uh, set of episodes. But what I love about the Embrace is that there are multiple things to do in it and it feels almost like you could do like a small scale DLC that exists just in the embrace and just does narrative stuff because it's that fleshed out of an area of and, and yeah. big enough to have adventures and find caves and do things in. Um, I, this I like a lot better as a tutorial area than young Aloy stuff, which is all railroaded and not great. And you don't really have all your capabilities yet. And... And fortunately, the Young Aloy stuff, it doesn't take too long. And it's there because it has to be there just in case you're someone who hasn't played a game like this before. Right, and it's there for narrative purposes too. But Hello, Grotta. I think the best part kind of about the... it is, like, there. it doesn't feel like a tutorial. Like, it feels like you're already starting your crafting and you're already starting, like, building up your arsenal to, like... You know, it's like still very handholdy in some ways, but it it still feels like the game has started now, and then there's like right. a second starting after. Oh mother! That's that's good because I think probably my perennial problem with this, um, I don't want to say this genre per se because I'm actually using genre kind of loosely here. Just like all these open worldish third person games that have various so uh, mechanics based on collection and exploration is that okay. so the many of them feel like they spend something like between 40 to 70 percent of the game in tutorial and the tutorial feels like overt like that that's one of the reasons why the assassin's creed series is rare like it, at least in the, the beginning didn't really appeal to me was because Whenever I saw people play the game, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm at hour like nine here, and they're they put me into a, like a, a arena so that I can learn <laughs> this new mechanic. Yeah, this game doesn't really do that. It, it does slowly expand and open, introduce new stuff, but it's not as painful about it as Look Assassin's Creed is, where it's like, hey, here's this completely new system. Right. Like that where this the... game opens up. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, please. No, please go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, where the game does open up slowly, it's usually combat stuff, like um, slowly introducing being able to set traps, slowly introducing uh, more advanced loot and weapons uh, that you can use in combination with other weapons. It's it's adding complexity to systems you're aware of, not, hey, suddenly now you're a merchant and you can buy stores for no reason eight hours in. It, it doesn't do anything like that. On a tangent, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about what I would describe as the Rockstar approach 
like the approach you see in Grand Theft Auto, which is where they have the, a sort of a tutorial that occasionally stops and teaches you a new set of mechanics, but it doesn't lock off those mechanics before then. And you probably will, at least randomly in a few cases, discover that mechanic set and maybe even experiment with it before it formally teaches it to you. On the one hand, I like the freedom that that introduces. Uh, you know, it allows well, me to kind of, of mess around with shit. motorcycles, for example, or with, you know, mini-games before uh, the plot actually officially teaches me how to do that. But on the other hand, it does feel kind of patronizing when it does. And also, you know, it often means that I'm still doing tutorials until kind of late into the campaign. Well, the, the Rockstar approach also has that, like, even, even worse than Assassin's Creed, I would argue one-off systems that are used contextually one place and nowhere else like vehicles that exist in one place in the game for one story mission and you can drive them whenever but like realistically you're gonna drive it to do the story mission and then never ever again right the fucking forklifts you know like what yes. who who decided that this was a, a skill set that was worth spending like 20 minutes developing <laughs> no there we go I love watching the armor pop off of these guys. Yeah. The combat is is really good. Like, I'd forgotten how fun it was. I ended up like like the I, I really have only been playing my my um new save like for two days. I just spent two days just playing this game and going like wow, I, I forgot how good this is. That's I mean nice. there there's a lot of there's a lot of grindy collecting health plant crap which is the lowest part of the game of the I, gameplay I, oh fuck <laughs> oh, damn it i did i did that the last time i came here too some of the um positioning on stuff that you can jump on is not super clear well just look for the yellow i was going towards the yellow but it didn't like properly pop me onto it and oh these things are back it is kind of amusing watching you like roller skate through the, <laughs> the chaparral here. Nice. Oh, I missed. Look cool though. I mean, you know, I say that like you missed with your attack, but the way that it dodged as you missed made it, <laughs> yeah. you know, genuinely look like it was a, a staged combat almost. Let's show the part okay, where you let's... immediately uh, do leaping rolls and flips while going uphill, like eight times in a row. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> this game has Dark Souls style dodge rolling, um, but no stamina bar so uh in combat you'll pr if i'm doing any kind of melee stuff you'll probably see me just constantly dodging everywhere i found those it's, those yellow peg things so hard to see like i don't yeah. know if it's just my tv or to... my horrible eyes possibly but they don't stand out I'm actually having I, a I, problem right here. Oh, there I, I had a problem. They're hard to see, but also when you do see them, they're wildly out of place. Like yeah. somebody set up rock Doesn't... climbing walls in the post-apocalypse. I mean, that, that actually seems somewhat reasonable if somebody else is doing this insanely calorie-requiring, uh, Tough mutter style, like leaping climb thing up the wall it makes sense that they you know established a climbing wall uh of course at that rate they might also just like put in a rope ladder or a staircase i, I just wonder i mean the I idea with the yellow is clearly to, to convey to the player where the stuff is i, I almost would prefer it to be uh, a re thing that the uh, uh -huh. vision thing that we have that could auto generate for us just have it be glowy purple it looks out to mother's gate yeah you know, I it do a kind of runner's vision. That she ignores me. Right. Her talking to all yeah, runner's vision worked very well. It actually takes a while for you to notice that runner's vision is uh, flagging things as red that are not naturally red. 
So um, we got that old lady's prayer beads and some meat for her. We will head back to her at some point here. But uh, since we're closer to the main quest stuff, let's go and get some blaze, which is oh, material yeah. used to create fiery stuff. No, just missed. When I was a child, I did a lot of climbing gyms with my family, and for whatever reason, uh, I'm not sure if it, the song had just come out or what the deal was. Uh, in fact, I know that the song had not just come out because it was night. The song came out in 1998, but it seemed like every single time I went to the climbing gym, the song was "Arms Wide Open" by Creed, played about eight different times. So literally. Whenever I see someone in a movie or a television show or a video game climbing, that stupid song blasts between my ears. <laughs> so just every time in this game, Josh is hopping from peg to peg. I promise you, every time in my head, it's just going to be like, With arms wide open, under I have the sunlight. Okay. We need to get some... Um... There are some Keep important going. skills that we're going to grab. This one. Got a I, I, I have a I pro tip. This one. Oh, what is that? So, one thing that's bullshit in this game um, is that you... If you want to install a mod and then you don't want to use that piece of equipment anymore, um, oh. it just can't transfer to anything else. It'll just break. So you have yeah. to get the skill to like prevent that from happening. And that was a pain in the butt, yep. but I went for it. And now that thing's not a problem for me. But it, I hate that. I hate working. that mechanic. Um we're I'm actually going to be saving up some uh uh, a good portion of skill points here. So we're just going to get a couple of basic skills because something that I find uh, very indispensable is um, the skill that allows you to call mounts. And that is at the very end of a tree that is otherwise pretty much totally useless. Um, we use mount and, and it's like It's like a, a 15... It's like, a, like yeah, it's a 15 point... Um, uh point investment, which is really kind of annoying. So I, I do quest over sometimes here. hate that when that happens in a skill tree. You know, Pathfinder uh, just... as a tabletop system has a lot of feet trees, which are similar, and where sort of infamously it requires a lot of bullshit that is not particularly relevant or useful, but that you've got to be like loading up on for the first 10 levels of your character to get at the indispensable combat stuff that every character of that build what? needs. I, why I know why they have a skill tree. <laughs> but I, I don't like their skill tree because this game is one of those games where it's not really character building so much as it is choosing the order in which you unlock all of the necessary things. There's not really anything... What? You're not building a character, you're... I'm just going to hit you. You're Unlocking choosing the ability order in which you slowly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. Banjo Kazooie. There's no difference. I there this may be enough Banjo skill points to unlock every skill. Banjo oh. Zero okay. Kazooie. There's there's a horse that wants to hurt me. Does that happen often, Josh? Sometimes. <laughs> Gotta see a man about a horse who wants me dead. Wait, does the man want you dead, or does the horse want you dead? Oh, I'm- no, the horse wants me dead. I'm seeing the man to put out a hit on him. You want to talk to an outcast? I'm desperate for help. Whatever the That's interesting because I don't think we ever actually heard him calling for help. Yeah, this I'm, I'm very baffled. She's in danger. She went after a scrapper near Mother's Cradle. I fear for her life. So I'm doing these kind of to to these are important sort of primers on the culture of the Nora here. Um, 
Why would your daughter hunt a scrapper on her own? And and where Aloy's place is in it. We we met Mother Grata a while back, and uh, she's an outcast um, like us, but she follows the law, so she doesn't actually talk to us because you're not supposed to talk to outcasts. Even if you are one, I guess. It means everything to Arana. She. Which does bring up an interesting conundrum, given that Ross also follows the law, but he talks to us. But eh. you know the matriarchs might. Kill Who polices that? You think? Don't you? I don't care. To be like, oh, I, tried looking I heard you speaking, and it's just like, now nah, I was just talking to myself, just and then it's like, well, what are they gonna do about it? I'll accept any punishment. I was just speaking rhetorically. Yeah. Just the outsider had Bam. a frighteningly I'll good grasp on daughter. my internal Make monologue. Sure she's all right. They actually They're do in the that lot. in a number of points. Um, <laughs> That's so passive aggressive. <laughs> now, if I was a dumb outsider, the sort of question I'd be asking is, hey, can you pass over that spear? <laughs> and I would think to myself, yes, and pass over the spear. Very much like this. This gathering medicinal herbs in this game like is trouble. the thing I hate the most about it. Uh, yep. You... Is there an inventory limit? Down. That's that's the first question yes. I have. Oh yes, boy! You can see the uh, the green bar. There's one plus there. Um, if it gets up to the like like I've got, that's that's two bars basically, and I've got two bars worth of capacity for it. So hmm. now. No, that's not what I wanted either. Sometimes this game is really touchy about jumping straight into melee if you let go of the uh, aim button. Oh, there's... Nice shooting, Dex. Thanks for saving me from those machines. Thank you. I thought those watchers were gonna tear me apart. Your father sent me after you. It's time to go home. I figured. But I can't go back until I get my mother's spear from that scrapper. Um, the outcast thing is interesting. Um, it may seem... That spear must mean a lot to you. Like, unusual to us. The idea of just exiling people, um, and forcing them to live, uh... Um, away from the tribe Scrapers for crimes and, and giving like time limits or like you can get exiled in this game like forever. like the Nora is sometimes exile people for a certain period of time because um, Your father is they've done something uh, rather he than the permanent exile that Ross and Aloy are in, in um, but this was actually an extremely common method of punishment um, in pretty much but I do wish he wouldn't yell at me so all uh, ancient societies um, how did you because you when you're I running on a generally agrarian or hunter-gatherer kind of uh, uh, economy where the vast majority of your people are involved just in just enough getting enough food so there's enough for everyone to eat, the idea of a prison system for rehabilitating right, uh, right. criminals just makes no sense. So you'd end up with just kind of like two tiers of punishments uh, in, in law codes, uh, where if the person isn't really a threat to their peers or society at large, then they would pay a fine, be disfigured or something, um, but then otherwise be immediately released to go back to their life. And if they weren't, then you would get into capital punishment, you'd execute people, or you would exile them. That's like what happened theme, to the uh, Vault Dweller. <laughs> That's actually a theme uh, explored in Xenoclash 2, which is not a game that comes up very much in the discourse. Uh... Do you, do you guys remember Xenoclash One? Is that is that a thing that like I never recalled? played. I don't I don't even know what that is. It was a, a a source brawler that came out a while ago, and it has a huh. generally genuinely kind of surreal aesthetic and like world, which has this kind of like a weirder Boris Vallejo mixed with kind of like a Salvador Dali shtick going. I remember it. Yeah, it's like everybody looks like a Moss Eisley Cantina alien. 
uh, in this kind of like vaguely, just, yeah. I, but anyway, it, it's too hard to describe. But uh, it's a brawler game, and the mechanics were pretty tight. And they made it a sequel, which I enjoyed right up to the point where I stopped playing it for some reason. And one of the concepts they explore is the idea that there is this like dude coming who's trying to bring like quote unquote civilization. And he introduces the idea that if somebody commits a crime, they should be imprisoned. And he, like, creates a prison. And everyone, including the main character who is wronged by this person, is actually kind of annoyed at the concept of imprisoning them. And is just like, you know, what, what's the point of this? Just sticking them in a box forever. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that that kind of concept of... I mean, there, there were prisons in the ancient world. Athens had one for a while, um, where they put people who couldn't pay fines. Um, but the idea of, like, a, a criminal justice system that used prisons as the default form of punishment, um, where it was expected to have a prison population. Aside from things like, um, you know, if you captured a bunch of prisoners at war, you might send them to forced labor in the mines somewhere. Um, that, aside from that kind of uh, imprisonment, like prison a, as a means of reforming people wasn't really something that was developed until really like the early modern period, like the 19th century, really. There. Right, and uh, it, uh, even among sociologists in modern society, it is hotly debated whether the concept of imprisoning someone to rehabilitate them is even something that's that's relevant. Or even something that, yeah. that, that works anywhere near the way we think it does. Although I say controversial not to say that, uh, like, not to give people a tip that, oh, no, it, it's actually complete horseshit, but that it, it legitimately is debated by people who know what they're doing. Oh, these things suck to fight. Make ammo. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just like Part of my problem with this like here it. is that the audio I have is, is actually on a slight delay because of the way that I'm listening to it. So some of that feedback is not here for me. <laughs> just like watching you like Pulling yourself across the, the snowy ground like a March Hare. You look like Sonic Come the Hedgehog. Sometimes I get really into the music, and then other th times I think it's just way too excessive for what's going on. Like you'll oh, see like crap. one like little boar, and then sometimes the music will start playing, and you're like, oh, yeah. all right, all right, dubstep.